Welcome into the Eagle Communication Sports Update right here on HutchPost.com. High school, college, pro. We keep you in the know. As always, alongside me, Glenn Grunwald, I am Darren Dunn. Today we'll talk a little bit about the Royals. We'll talk about HCC Volleyball, HCC Football. Glenn's going to sit down with Sammy Lane of HCC Soccer. But first, we talk about that HCC Volleyball. Pat Hall, another season in which he is selected to three-peat. This time to win the Jayhawk Conference once again. Some stellar seasons, Glenn, that Pat Hall has had. Albeit he may not be returning everybody he wants to return this season. Yeah, he seems to keep rebuilding. I, I think they played bring back two players this year, lost a couple international players that were outstanding, but he just gets it done. Pat Hall knows how to win. He won a Pratt, he won a Barton, he's won here at Hutchison, and, and I think it's going to be exciting to see this season kick off, which by the way starts this weekend. They're on the road at New Mexico Military, then they're on the road at uh, Colby, and then the CSI tournament, they're not home until September 10th as they take on uh, Butler Community College. Butler back into Division One, so that'll add two more conference games for HCC Volleyball. They win in 2012 outright, of course, last year, splitting with Colby to split that title. And Colby's going to be a team they're going to see pretty early this season. Uh, in fact, they're going to take them on on August 27th. Mm -hmm. So that's another team to watch out for with Seward selected third in the standings of the preseason. Yeah, so Colby's one that snuck up on them. They went up to Colby and lost that, uh, that match up there, uh, uh, lost one of the games up there, and that seemed to really kind of throw it down out a little bit, and they had to have a, uh, a win at home to get, and they just handled him easily, but it was a matter. He's going to be missing Tara Wade, and like I said, a couple international player, uh, Gaga and a couple others that, that, that they're not going to have, but he, he has a way of rebuilding. Pat just does a really good job of rebuilding, and I, I think it's going to be very competitive. It's going to be fun coming up on September 10th when they take on Butler here at the sports arena. That's a 6.30 start, by the way, that evening. You always know the mark of a good coach when instead of a rebuilding year, it actually turns into a year in which they reload. Perhaps rebuilding this season, HCC football picked second. You know this in the KJCCC, but picked number 11 overall in the preseason poll. How's that ranking sit with you? Uh, number 11, I think it's a little a little low for me. By the way, I think they should have been in the top 10, but hey, uh, uh, it is what it is, and I, I, it doesn't matter where you start, it's where you finish, and that's what's important. And he's got he's got nine returning starters, which is gonna be a big thing. Big competition going on at quarterback, big competition going on at running back. Their running backs may be the best in the nation. Alvin Kamara, transfer out of Alabama, already uh, committed to Tennessee, is gonna be big time. Uh, they got some receivers, defensive backs are gonna be solid. I'm I'm excited for football. I can't wait to get it going. And, and scrimmages are happening. I think the scrimmage again this Friday had an inner squad scrimmage this last Sunday morning. And I'm excited to see uh, ACC football. I think you fans out there are going to be excited as well. 100 points in the poll to get that 11th ranking, 8 and 4 last season. They returned four offensive starters, five defensive starters, 19 lettermen. But it looks like some of those holes may be in that defensive secondary, Glenn, where they lose the likes of uh, All-American Jalen Myers and then a couple of other guys in Feng Tang and Goodlett. Yeah, uh, Jalen Myers, by the way, has just uh, shown up at West Virginia, so he's going to be in the Big 12. And, of course, uh, Shadow Fentag, many sources say he's going to start at Georgia. His upside is so big, and Shadow's really got a little bit bigger even over the summer, and he will start at Georgia as well this year. So that kind of gives you the level of, of quality athletes that he had in that secondary that's lost. But he'll plug them in and get it going again. How strong is the Jayhawk Conference, Glenn? You got three people selected, three teams in that top 25 preseason poll. Butler's in at six. Yep. HCC, we mentioned, is 11. Dodge City at 17. It's going to be a rough road. Yeah, Dodge City got a win over the over the Blue Dragons in overtime last year at Dodge City. Uh, so a Dodge, the Blue Dragons were able to get them on the road in the playoffs, but we won't have the playoffs this year. So that's going to be something we're going to have to keep in mind. I think you got to throw Garden City into the max in the, in the mix of those top four. Uh, so Butler, Butler's going to be on on top until somebody knocks off Butler. Highland was able to do it last year in El Dorado. Blue Dragons will have their chance very quickly in, in, the, in the schedule. Matter of fact, they play September 13th at Butler. Outside of the conference play, it's even stronger. Iowa Western Glen picked number two in the NJCAA preseason poll. So when we go out to Council Bluffs, we could have a game on our hands. And that's going to be later in the season. So both teams are going to have a little bit of the season under their belt. So we will be doing that game on the road up there. So that's going to be fun uh, going to Iowa. A little new competition, Iowa Western. They scrimmaged them before. They've never played them in the regular season. Third to last game of the season. That'll happen on October 25th. We turn now to HCC Soccer. Ten years Lady Dragon Soccer has been in the house here in Hutch. You're going to sit down with Sammy Lane in just a little bit, but 
Glenn, what success he's had over the years. 136 wins, three Jayhawk titles, and three Region 6 titles. Yeah, he has. He, Johnson County and Butler are kind of nemesis to some extent. And, and uh, Sammy, uh, we're going to have fun sitting down with Sammy and talking about what's different this season. But he's a character, folks. Get ready for it because it's coming your way in just a little bit. Sammy Lane, 10 years. I can't believe he's been here 10 years. He's a lot of fun to have to be around. Accustomed to victory. They see a slide last season, four conference losses, which is the most since 2000. And seven, but I think he's ready to bounce back. He's ready to see a faster and deeper team and hopefully not be so injury riddled. Yeah, that happened last year. He'll talk about that a little bit. That, that happened last year, but uh, that happens in sports and it happened to soccer last year. You see it happen all the time. Uh, they're going to be deeper though this year and that's the, the that's the key to, to soccer. He plays a fast game and he expects a lot out of those kids. When we come back, Glenn sits down with Sammy Lane of HCC Soccer. It's all here on HutchPost.com and your Eagle Communications Sports Update. Welcome back to the Eagle Communication Sports Update brought on HutchPost.com. Now joining me, Sammy Lane, in his 10th year now at the soccer head coach for Hutchinson Community College. Sammy, here we go again, 10 years a decade. Yeah, it's amazing when I think back on it. You know, I still remember being in Stang's office the first time when he, when he offered me the job. and. Uh, here we are 10 years later. It's amazing how time flies by. 10 years, and you're kind of the, the, the humorist of the, <laughs> of the athletic department to some extent, of course, with your, your background. A lot of folks might want to know, uh, uh, played for, over with Wichita for many, many years for the Wings, and, uh, and then uh, have coached youth soccer all over the place, and here you are at Hutch for uh, 10 years. Yeah, you know, it became, I mean, obviously Wichita became my home, and then soccer, luckily enough, I was fortunate enough to play for the Wichita Wings and then coach for the Wichita Wings. And, the natural progression then was to, to coach youth soccer, you know, and then obviously when the wings folded, I wanted to continue in soccer. So then the nat natural progression was college soccer. And, uh, you know, very fortunate to be at Hutch. Like I said, it's been 10 years now, and, you know, hopefully we'll be talking about 15 years and then 20 years, and then I'll give the torch to somebody else and he can try and catch me. Sammy's the inaugural coach for HCC, uh, like we just mentioned, 10 years. Used to winning. You always, you guys, you really brought a winning attitude and you expect to win. It's the most important thing for these young ladies. Plus, you, you allow them to grow up a little bit. As yeah, well. you know, and that's kind of, if I was to say, it, like my philosophy would be that, you know, we want to try and instill into the kids, you want to try and win all the time. Uh, be it in the classroom, be it in the soccer field, be it in practice, be it competing together. Um, and then hopefully at the end of it, they come out a little bit better person. I mean, that's ultimately the goal, I think, of any of the coaches here is just to instill that little bit of winning edge into the kids. And so, you know, when they go away and they deal with another coach or another boss or another teacher, whatever it is, um, they'll have a good preparation here and, uh, you know, hopefully we've put them on the road to success. Naturally, also a lot of international ties. A lot of kids come over from England, from Ireland, uh, from your home countries, and as well as some local uh, athletes around here as well. Yeah, and that's exactly, you know, that was the formula to our success was, you know, we basically had half international and then half Kansas kids. Um, and we had it rolling there for a while, you know, we'd gone three years without losing a conference or a region game. And then they changed the rules, so we have had to adjust, you know, how we do things. I mean, we're down to four internationals now. Um, and then we're filling in the old international kids with out-of-state out of kids now. So um, I think we've got a good balance. You know, I like the international kids because they bring something to the campus mm -hmm. that maybe they wouldn't otherwise see. Um, and then it's good for, you know, kids from, from here to get to experience another culture. And then obviously the kids coming over just totally appreciate being in America, uh, you know, being here with the facilities we have and, and just really enjoying big time college sports, um, you know, because back home, especially women's soccer, it's still developing. You know, they'd never get to play in the stadiums or train or travel in the, in the even in the buses we do, you know, so just uh, to create that environment for them, I think it's a win-win situation for us, the American kids and the European kids. Yeah, it sure is. Experience is a big part of that. Now, you kick it off August 20th with a scrimmage down in Northwest Oklahoma State. That's on the road, so that's coming up real quick. And then you're at home August 23rd uh, against Western Wyoming. That is a, a, a 2 p.m. Yeah. Uh, pitch start. Yeah, no, you know, straight into the season now. I think we've been training long enough. We've been at it for two and a half weeks. And, you know, you can just tell that kids are tired of practicing against each other. And I think we're all our um, Northwest Oklahoma State Division II soccer program be a good way to start a season. We have three of our former players down there, so um, it's good to get to see them, and it's a good start for us. And then Western Wyoming are a pretty good team. You know, they play in a tough league out there with Otero and Laramie, who are both, you know, typically top 10 teams, and they do quite well in that conference. So uh, it's a good way to start the season off, kind of, 
you know, show the girls straight away that, that things are different now. You know, we've got to get into competitive mode, and uh, we're just looking forward to getting started. An injury a little bit last year, but uh, that's going to be part. That's part of soccer. Yeah, I mean, that's part and parcel of it. You know, you just kind of got to deal with it, and um, you know, we're still haven't had our, our All American kid released back yet. She had a little bit of surgery in the summer, and you know, we're hoping to have her released Friday. Um, but other than that, we're full health, and you know. We're ready to go. Sounds good. Again, uh, they kick it off at home against Western Wyoming coming up on August 23rd, this coming Saturday. Next home game will be against Coffeyville on September 14th. Say, thanks, Sammy, for stopping by. We'll have you out here for some more on, Absolutely. on Eagle, Eagle Communication <laughs> Sports Update. You bet. My Darren pleasure. and I'll be back with more right after this. into the Eagle Communication Sports Update on HutchPost.com. High school, college, pro. We keep you in the know. As always, Glenn Grunwald, I am Darren Dunn. We look now to the streaking hot Royals. Eight straight series wins. They are now at 69 and 55 on the season. Glenn, hopefully there's no signs of slowing down here. First time in 20 years, 14 games over 500, and they are, they are red hot, blue hot, white hot, you name it, they're hot. Another big win over Minnesota. And how about Josh Willingham? Just getting it done against his old club, and that always happens. You, you get traded, and all of a sudden it's boom, like I'll show you guys, and boy did he ever. Last night's win, they took a 3 nothing lead in early innings and could have had more. Bases were juiced, Willingham came up and struck out, but still, they were able to get the win, and now they travel out to Colorado and then return home. It's gonna be fun. Last week we voiced some concern about the Royals being on the streak and going up against John Lester again, just recently traded from the Red Sox over to the Oakland Athletics. And of course they do drop that game 11-3. Lester with his 2.51 ERA throws nine strikeouts. But after that they reel off three straight wins, two more against Oakland. You get the 3-0 victory, the 7-3 victory, followed by a win at Minnesota 6-5. They fall to Minnesota four to one, but interestingly enough, in that game, Glenn, they actually out hit the Twins yeah. eight to six. Yeah, they sure did. They're, they're getting production from, from from some bats that are kind of surprising me a little bit. And also Hamilton, those guys, the, the bullpen bullpen is strong, but you know what? Those starters, they know. And when, when that rain delay the other day, Darren, I think I think they knew they were going to have to come out and and reestablish themselves so they don't have to go the bullpen. Uh, the difference between '85 and this year's team, there was there was it was amazing how many full games that got out of their pitching staff. That hadn't happened this year. Only three full games out of their pitching staff. So they're really relying on their bullpen to see if it holds up through the hot days of August that are just around the corner. That 12-6 victory over Minnesota. Gordon hits his 13th home run of the season. Salvador Perez goes for his 15th HR of the year. Then they win again at Minnesota 6-4. Salvador Perez actually goes down. He ends up suffering a pinched patella tendon. Mm -hmm. However, they're saying that's not serious, but in his stead, come in, enter Mr. And I'm looking for his name Kratz, here, Glenn. Yeah, Kratz, Kratz, yeah. Eric Kratz throws two or hits two solo home runs and basically ends up being the factor in the game as the Royals win at six to four. Yeah, and you gotta have those pitch hitters that come in and, and do well as as well. And, and Kratz did hit two solo home runs. Butler's doing well, Gordon's doing well. It's gonna be exciting as we go down the stretch here in August and get into September. Kratz probably expected to go back to his normal role because Salvador Press thinks he's going to play, but I guess that ultimately lies on Ned Yost's hands and we'll see what Ned decides to do. Upcoming, two more games on the road against the Colorado Rockies. The Rockies, wow, what a terrible year they're having. 49 and 75. Then the Royals, once again, will have a three-game road stand against the Texas Rangers. The Rangers struggling as well at 48 and 76. But here's the kicker, as the Royals you can't play down to your opponent. They need to stay on this high rise and keep riding out the victories. Well, and I, li I like the fact they're playing some good teams. They're playing some good teams with the Rangers. And don't forget the Yankees come in on a, on a rare makeup game on a Monday night. So they're playing some good team teams when they need to play well, they're playing well. If you're not already on the bandwagon, now's the time to jump on it. Get that Royals gear, your wristbands, whatever it takes. Get that Royals blue. For Glenn Grunwald, I am Darren Dunn. We'll catch you next time here on HutchPost.com and your Eagle Communications Sports Update.